uh, we're in chapters 1 through 4, essentially. It deals with seven churches. Are you all familiar with the seven churches out there? Okay, you have Smyrna and Philadelphia and Laodicea and a host of other ones. You have seven churches all in all. The Lord addresses seven churches in the book of Revelation, particularly seven. God always deals in sevens, by the way, as far as completion goes, which represents seven segments within the church age. It's very interesting to look at the description that is given of each of those churches. Because it matches, in detail, the description historically of the church age since the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Did you all know that? It's very, very interesting to look at that study. Now, we currently are in the Laodicean church age. Go to Revelation chapter 3, and let me show you how this matches word for word. And this couldn't have matched at any other time. Revelation chapter 3. And uh, turn with me to uh, verse number uh, 14. And it says, Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. Right? I would that thou wert hot or cold. So that because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Does that not describe the church of today? Apathy? Right? We're neither hot nor cold. And by the way, this passage is not telling us that we need to be hot and we shouldn't be cold. It's saying that we shouldn't be lukewarm. Because guess what? You can use hot water to make soup. Right? You can use hot water to make tea. And I'll tell you what, on a hot day, cold water sure tastes very, very good. So you can do something with cold water and you can do something with hot water. But when you become lukewarm, it's really good for nothing. And Jesus Christ says, I'll spew thee out of my mouth, that lukewarm water. It always reminds me of that cup of water that I go for when I'm preaching that's been sitting on the pulpit for a week. You know? Oh, can't stand that taste. Okay, that's the lukewarm water. That describes the church of this age. Lukewarm, apathetic. We're not hot and we're not cold. Okay? And Christ says, I would that you were hot. I could make soup out of you, or so I could do something with you. I would that you were cold. You could refresh me on a hot day. I could do something with you if you were cold. But you're neither one of those. You're lukewarm. You're apathetic. Look at verse number 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Do you see that? I mean, what, what other age could the church make that statement? I don't know of any other age, any other time, in which the church could make the statement, we are rich and increased with goods and we have need of nothing, other than right now. The church age today is rich and increased with goods. We're putting McDonald's in our fellowship halls. We're giving out Starbucks cards to everybody who visits. We have an overabundance of wealth. And not just in this country. In Europe... In Asia, all over the place. We have an overabundance of wealth in our churches. And we really have lost the need to rely on God. Because we are looking at ourselves and saying, hey, we have need of nothing. Our bills are getting paid. The heat's still on. The air conditioner's still working. We're still sitting in padded pews. Right? We got McDonald's after the service. Okay? All of our needs are taken care of. Amen? And really, you look at that. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, this really does fit the Laodicean church age. Look at what he says. He goes on to say in verse number 17, And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, but spiritually, spiritually, we are more bankrupted than any other time in church history. Amen. And this is the whole thing with, with, the, with the Bible version issue. Okay? You've got 800 Bible versions out there, right? They've all come about within the last, uh, you know, 140 years, essentially, 130 years, right? Man, if there should be a generation, a church that is lit on fire for the Word of God, that has access to the Word of God like no other uh, church in history, it ought to be this one. So many different 
translations out there. But you know what? Those translations aren't the Word of God. And they're not yielding fruit. And we are more spiritually bankrupted than any other generation in church history. But yet we have more access, supposedly, to the Word of God. More translations. More understanding. More scholars. More teaching. More Bible college. More this. More that. More all of that. But spiritually, we're bankrupt. But we look at ourselves and say, yeah, but we have need of nothing. We really don't. Okay? Okay. Look at what he says in verse number 18. I counsel to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, spiritually he's talking about now, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath, the, hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, I don't know how you can look at the description of the church of Laodicea and say to yourself that that does not match categorically with everything that the church of today is going through. Now, let me say this to you. The church of Laodicea is the last church that's mentioned. Is the last church that's mentioned. Let me show you this chart here. And if you want a copy of this chart, I can get this to you. Just email me. But you see here, I wish I had a little laser pointer. But you see over here, on the far, uh, it would be your left. You have the church of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. See the cross over there on your left? Okay, that's the cross. That's Jesus Christ died, and then he rose again. And it began the church age. That bubble there is the church age. And then you have at the end of that church age, the Laodicea, the age of apostasy, by the way, all of a sudden, that's the period of the rapture. And you have here little dates and things that happen during that time. Each of these represents a period of time. And if you look at the description that's given of Ephesus, it fits that period of time. If you look at the uh, description in Revelation of Smyrna, it fits that period of time. Pergamum, same thing, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia. It fits all of that time. Philadelphia is the church that's known for holding to the true word of God. And that was the height of the missionary movement. Okay? That birthed the Great Awakening. Uh, the first and second Great Awakening, by the way. So all of those things fit right in there. And then the Laodicean Church Age uh, puts it at about 1900 to the present. And you have World War I and II, the state of Israel, Jerusalem United, and uh, false peace and security, and so on and so forth. So you see that we are in that church age, okay? And it's divided into seven different ages, described by seven different churches in seven different periods of time. You see that? And then you have the rapture, the tribulation, and so on and so forth. It's a very good chart. You should get a copy of that, okay? The end of the church age, then, is the rapture, of course. Look at Revelation chapter 4, and verse number 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trump talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So you have this whole discussion, essentially in chapters 1 through 3. This discussion and, and this look at all of these seven different churches on earth. And God is exhorting these churches. He's commending these churches when he can. And he's correcting them when needs be. Okay? And then all of a sudden, we read in Revelation chapter 4, verse number 1, we see the words... I heard, as it were, a trump talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Come up hither. And it talks about that trumpet as a voice talking. That is a perfect description of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay? Matches word for word. And from 